Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Gary with Thick Skinned RC. Back to uh, do a quick unboxing and initial impressions on a new servo that I got. Um, as you all saw in one of the last videos, I have the 102 Honcho. It's RTR, and it comes with this bad boy here, the TSX45. Uh, I've had this in a few rigs. The Yeti that I bought, RTR. Um, a couple of used rigs that I bought. Um, came with it as well, so not my favorite servo. They all end up stripping um, relatively quickly. The the one plastic gear that's in there, even though it's supposed to be a metal gear servo. Um, if you so are so inclined, there is, or at least there was as of you know a few months ago. Last time I looked, uh, a kit on eBay. Uh, I think it's like ten bucks. Um, you can get that metal gear uh, and actually fix these. They probably wouldn't be horrible then. I don't know. I, I just, they're not my favorite servo. So for relatively cheap, um, you can do a whole lot better. Like the DS3218 or 2318, whatever it is that we did a review on. Um, that one, in my opinion, is leagues better than this thing. Um, so for the price of ripping that apart, plus the parts that you need to do it, for, you know, seven extra bucks, you can get a whole new servo. So that's faster, stronger actual metal gears waterproof lasts a lot longer so anyways enough babbling about that um today we are here to talk about this jx servo cls 5830 hv uh supposed to be 30 kilograms i believe at eight volts yeah and pretty quick response times you know the uh the specs aren't that far off from the home servo that i have in the wraith so um for now it's going to live in the 10-2 where it stays permanently. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, it very well could stay in here. Um, we'll just have to see. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and open her up and see what we got. All right, so I got the bottom popped off. There's a total of eight screws. Um, four of them are, four of them you can get to really easily. Two in the middle bottom and two in the middle top but these other four in the corner like I mentioned um, you have to cut out some rubbery foam stuff that they cover up the screw holes with um, not a big deal but definitely something if you ever you know send it in for warranty uh, might be hard to get past them saying you didn't do anything to it so well, let's go ahead and keep opening her up here and see what she's got. So here's the top casing. It does have a bearing at the top, obviously. But what I'm noticing is there's literally like no lube. And there is a plastic gear down at the bottom. So unless that gear is just completely... No, yeah, that's definitely... There is a plastic gear down at the bottom. Yeah, man, that thing's literally like... Tiny bit of white lithium... Well, I'm sorry, I won't say it was white lithium. White grease down at the bottom. But man, there's not much in the way of lube on that thing. And you do have that, looks like a plastic gear right down there. I don't know, not blown away yet, but all this doesn't matter if it actually works and lives for a while, so. But, not too impressed with there being that plastic gear in there, and there not being any rubber gaskets. Yeah, all right, so I take back the no gasket thing. There's one there. It's micro. Um, obviously, you don't need a huge one if the tolerances are real tight and the gap's real small. But, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a gasket there. And this does have that gasket, too. It's micro. But as long as tolerances are tight and the gap is small, that gasket should be big enough. I think I'm going to go ahead and throw some grease here in the top gear while I'm at it. Um, I just went ahead and put some conformal coating. 
on the PCB just to add a little extra to it. Uh, I'm hoping all this work isn't for naught with that plastic gear in there. We'll find out. But I'm going to slap some here uh, along the bottom. So I'm going to put that top cap back on. Should add an extra layer of uh, waterproofing there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the servo slapped into the 10-2 and uh, get this thing back up and running again. Uh, that tactic servo just took a crap on me. I'm going to open it up later, see, uh, see what was wrong with it. But my guess is the plastic gear in the middle probably stripped, and I'm really hoping that that guy doesn't do the same thing. Um, with that one plastic gear that was in there. So, only time will tell. All right, so I did manage to get the servo into the SCX-102 Honcho. <clears throat> Without using spacers, it did sit a little low and wouldn't let me get the servo horn on there um, and still clear the pan hard link. So, uh, not a big deal, you know, it's just a taller servo than the factory one. So, um, put the spacers under there, under that side. And it's sitting in there good. Another minor problem I ran into is that there's just not enough slack to plug the servo in uh, without an extension. So I've got one over in the drawer. I'm going to dig out here in a second. But um, yeah, if you want to use the servo in the honcho, um, unless you pull that cable really tight with no slack, it's not going to reach in there. And I, I don't like it to be that tight with it shimmy and shaking, falling around. I want there to be a little slack in there. So. Don't pull anything out, so I'm just going to put a little extension extension on here, and uh, that should get me good to go. And then the honcho will be back up and running, and we'll put this uh, JX servo to the test and see how durable it is with that plastic gear. All right, appreciate y'all watching, and uh, remember hit that like and subscribe if you haven't, and check us out on Instagram and Facebook too. We've got uh, a lot more servo reviews and some actual servo testing coming up too, so uh, y'all stay tuned. Have a good one.